Hey guys, it's Dave Marshall with the RC Air Marshall YouTube channel. Bigfoot has been found in Georgia. He's been captured. Uh, I am here today with the RC Aero's Bigfoot Airplane 1300 millimeter uh, 3S uh, airplane. This is available from HobbyZone.com. You'll see some links down in the description for the uh, for the airplane, for the radio that we're going to be using. Uh, for the types of batteries that it uses um, and we're gonna do a quick build video for the uh, for the Bigfoot you know we'll do a little bit of unboxing a little bit of building and uh, we'll talk about uh, any kind of weird things that I find during the build process and uh, let's go ahead and get started all right so we're gonna go ahead and get to the unboxing uh, I've got it here we'll go ahead and what? All right, we don't need that crap. All right, so here's our first wing. This will be the right wing of the airplane. We'll set that down there. Next, we'll be taking out the wing spar, the carbon rod. All right, so there's our wing spar. Next, we've got... Uh-oh. We've got the left wing. Here we've got our main gear assembly with our big fat bagel tires. Now, something that I'm noticing here is <laughs> these tires are pretty stiff. They are not soft at all. Uh, they are a, a very, um, you know, stiff foam rubber type of material. They don't have a lot of shock absorbing, uh, you know, properties at all. They're very stiff. And we'll go ahead and lay those down. Uh, next, we'll go ahead and pull out the fuselage. Right here, there are a couple of neat scale features on here where we've got the uh, two exhaust pipes uh, coming out of the bottom of the cowling. On the front, that's pretty neat. We'll go ahead and set that down here and just kind of get everything out of the box. There's nothing in there. Here we've got our propeller. Uh, let's see. So, oddly, the uh, the propeller that they have packaged with the uh, with the Bigfoot, and I don't know if it's like this for all of the Aeros um, RC models. The propeller doesn't have any uh, any markings on it. Now, on the box, it says that this is an 11 by 7 propeller. I guess we just kind of have to take their word for it because it doesn't say uh, anywhere on there. It doesn't have any kind of identifying markings on the hub or on the, you know, on the root of the blades uh, that it's an 11 by 7 propeller. So that's a little weird. But, uh, you know, it is a, uh, a pretty stiff propeller. It feels like it's made out of some type of composite material like the APC propellers. I'm going to set that down. Uh, next, we'll pull out our vertical stabilizer right here. Um, the hinges are all just standard foam hinges. Like, they don't have, uh, you know, any kind of plastic hinges in there at all. So, it's just foam hinges. So, you know, over the life of the airplane, you're going to want to take a look at that and make sure uh, that that foam hinge doesn't separate. <clears throat> I'm going to set that down. Also got our horizontal stabilizer. Again, uh, it's all foam hinges there, uh, but it's already joined in the center, so that's kind of nice. You don't have to do any kind of, um, uh, you know, you don't have to put the two sides together and fit anything in there. It's already ready to go, and the the horn moves both sides of the uh, of the elevator uh, right out of the box. So that's nice. And lastly, we have our instruction manual. That's not the last part. 
I've also got a little bag of goodies hiding out in here. Let's see. Oh, I've also got a spinner assembly that I almost left in the box. You've got a hub and the and the spinner. And right here, a bag of parts. You know, so this has a few plastic parts in there. It's got all the screws that you need for the assembly. Uh, looks like it's got a uh, an Allen wrench, an antenna that glues in, and the plastic cap that goes over the uh, the main gear assembly when you attach it to the fuselage. So that's good. Uh, that's it for the unboxing. So we'll go ahead and crack open the instruction manual and get to building. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the assembly. Uh, I've got the uh, the parts bags are open. Uh, we've got um, several different types of screw, well, two different types of screws really. Uh, one thing that you're going to need as far as tools, you're going to need a two millimeter uh, Allen head. Uh, it does come with an Allen wrench in the bag, but I've got a uh, like a like a driver for uh, for hex head screws, so I'm not going to mess with that. All of the screws with the exception of these two little guys have a uh, two millimeter, um, they, they use two millimeter Allen wrenches. And you've got uh, some shorter screws and you've got some longer screws. There's only two different sizes. So it says the shorter screws are 10 millimeter and the longer ones are 26. Um, anybody that uh, is a fan of Motion RC probably recognizes this King Boxer stuff. This is very similar to um, to foam tack adhesive. We're going to need that for uh, for the antenna that goes on the top. It also comes with a couple of Y harnesses. Uh, one is for your aileron and one is for your flaps. Uh, so they give those to you in the package. A uh, little section of double-sided tape. Uh, that's going to be for later when we install the, uh, the vertical stabilizer. Uh, you've also got a couple of control rods uh, with the clevises on them. Uh, an antenna that's going to go on the top for a little bit of scale appearance and your clip for your uh, or your cover for your main gear assembly. Now the uh, first step is to install the main gear assembly so we're going to go ahead and get started with that. Um, on the main gear assembly you're going to see on the aluminum you've got a little notch right here where that third screw goes and that lines up with the plastic so there's only one way to put this right so you see this area and you've got that little circular spot right there so that main gear can only go in there one way all right we're going to go ahead and put the cap on and it, it fits a little tight inside the foam that's good line everything up here and we'll go ahead and this says to use the 10 millimeter screws. So we're going to use the shorter screws that come with the kit. And one thing I noticed too is in, on the plastic um, area that's embedded into the into the foam underneath here, it's got brass inserts for the screws. So you don't have to worry about stripping out the plastic. All right, so we'll go ahead and make sure all of those are kind of tight. Make sure our main gear doesn't come flying off. All right, so we are good with the main gear. Uh, the next part is going to be to place our uh, horizontal stabilizer. So we've got that main gear assembly in now. Uh, and the, the tail wheel and the tiller assembly are pre-installed when you uh, when you take the fuselage out of the box and it's kind of interesting how that mates up with the rudder we'll see that here in just a second when we install the vertical stabilizer uh, for the horizontal stabilizer we're just going to place that on the model uh, that is going to be step two so that's going to go right here and you'll see this notch in the front of the horizontal stabilizer and that mates up right here with the fuselage right so you don't have to worry about getting it centered it's going to center itself up when you put that notch in there so you'll see how that notch goes right onto that area of the foam and the fuselage so you know that you got it centered when you install it 
So that's a nice feature. We'll go ahead and get this done. Now, the next step um, is going to be the vertical stabilizer. Now, the vertical stabilizer, they want you to use this little piece of uh, double sticky, like double sided foam tape. So we'll go ahead and remove the backing from those. And in the fuselage, on the back, you'll see a little recess here, just forward of where you've got that horizontal stabilizer. If you look right here, you've got that recess and that piece of double sticky tape is gonna fit right down inside there like that. There we go. And our next step is going to be to install our vertical stabilizer. Now, something I want you guys to take a look at here, on the bottom of the rudder, right? So we've got our rudder right here. On the bottom of the rudder, there's a little slot right there. That slot is where the tiller for the rear steering is gonna go. So if we look right here on the back of the fuselage, the way that rear tail wheel is, and you've got the steering tiller there at the top, that steering tiller is gonna go inside the slot uh, that's molded plastic on the bottom of the, uh, on the bottom of the rudder. So we're gonna go ahead and install the vertical stabilizer and make sure that that tiller is right up inside that groove there on the bottom of the rudder. All right, so we'll go ahead and press that down and it's the, that double sticky tape really isn't there you know to to do anything more than just hold it in place as we insert the screws all right so the next step is going to be to insert two of the 26 millimeter screws into the bottom of the vertical stabilizer So, and you can see those go right here and right here. Just using our hex driver, we'll go ahead and get that done. There we go. So now we've got our vertical stabilizer and horizontal stabilizer installed. Uh, next is gonna be our wing assembly. So the first thing that we're gonna do is insert our carbon spar into the wing assembly. So we'll go ahead and get that carbon spar all the way in there. And I'm gonna grab a pair of cutters real quick. And Cut that little tie so we can let the servo leads hang down into the fuselage, into the radio cavity. I'm sure we have another tie over here. There's another little wire tie. So we'll clip that and that will let us extend our leads out. And you can see we've got labels on everything where we've got our aileron flap, uh, aileron flap, and we've got this second uh, just two uh, conductor uh, piece, and that's going to be for the light assemblies inside the wing. All right, and we've also got our wing struts that go down to the bottom of the fuselage. We'll go ahead and untape those now as well. Got the carbon rod inserted. Carbon rod. We'll go ahead and install the other side. And get those two sides. Oh, 
get those two so I kind of made it up against each other there, just like that. All right, now we're going to install the Y harnesses for the servo leads. And like I said, the Y harnesses come with the kit. You've got one wire harness for the ailerons, which is right here, and one for the flaps. We're going to make sure that our polarities are correct. So you want brown to brown, orange to orange, yellow to yellow. Or if you guys haven't seen these before, what this is, is a, uh, it's a clip for your servo connection. So I've seen plenty of people on YouTube or whatever doing these build videos and they uh, will just take like some some scotch tape or whatever and wrap it around their servo connections. This is much better. It's made for the job. It clips right on. These things are pretty cheap. They're a few dollars for a pack of like 25 of them. They're awesome. I'll link them down in the description in the description so you guys can uh, can see where to get them. But basically what it is is it just slides over the servo and it's got a little slot cut in there for the wires to go in and you just snap it in place and that holds your servo leads together. So anytime you're using like servo extensions, Y connections, anything like that, you can use these little clips. They don't add a lot of bulk to the, uh, to the overall size of the, uh, of the coupling and they're great. They do a much better job than tape. So, you know, like they say, use the right tool for the job and you'll get better results, right? And that's it. And we're all done with the little clips and we are ready to move on to the next step. I'm going to skip ahead in the manual a little bit because there's some things that I think might be some discrepancies. You know, where it's telling us to do something a little bit out of order and I want to make sure, I mean, that's why I wanted to do this build video is so just in case, you know, I ran into some weird stuff like that, we can let you guys know about it. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step of the build. Um, and it's a, it's a little bit out of order. So uh, it wants you to go ahead and take the wing assembly and install it onto the top. Now, it mentioned something about the servo. So here's, here's exactly what the, what the instructions say. It says, connect the flap servos, then the aileron servos using the included Y harness. Secure the wing set using the included screws. Connect the LED controller to the receiver. Like the receiver's already in there. There is no receiver in there. So, you know, we're gonna go ahead and move forward a little bit to installing the receiver inside the fuselage cavity. You know, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab the, uh, the different harnesses and stuff that are in here and see what we're working with. Aha! So, the lights on this are all five volt LEDs, right? So what that means basically is we can plug them right into the receiver and they're gonna get their power from the receiver. Now, your light harness, you're gonna be able to see the difference between the lights and everything else because the lights are only two wires and all your servos have three wires. So the, right, the lights only need, you know, your positive and your negative wire. On here, we've got a bit uh, like a Y harness, right? This Y harness is what would plug into an unused channel on your receiver. And it goes into this little connector over here. And this would go to the lights on your wings, on your right and left wing. The problem is this little module right here is a strobe module which will make all of the lights in your wings strobe. So your landing lights and your uh, navigation lights inside your wings, you don't want those flashing. That's not scale at all. So we're just gonna take this little guy and throw it away. Who needs it, right? So the other thing that we're gonna need to do is because we no longer have that stupid module, we're gonna take another Y harness and use that to connect our two uh, light leads from the servos together uh, so we can get them uh, plugged into the receiver and getting power. 
So this Y harness is not included in the kit. This is one that I had already. So you will need a Y harness to complete the, the, uh, the build. So what we wanna do with these, these are you know standard two pin uh, connectors. They will slide right into the Y harnesses the same way a servo would, but we're only gonna connect the black to the brown and the red to the red on the servo connector. So we just wanna make sure that that is all the way over and gets plugged in good and tight. And that is fine right there. And we'll do the same thing on this side, black to black and red to red. Well, what we're gonna look at here is this little diagram, right, where it tells you aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder, gear, spare, right? That's fine if you're running a Futaba radio. Now, I know that there's a lot of people running Futaba radios. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them. They are arguably better than Spectrum radios, but, you know, that's what I'm using as a Spectrum radio. And the pinout of a Spectrum receiver is different than a Futaba because this only covers the Futaba section, we're gonna go over how the Spectrum needs to be hooked up. So a Spectrum throttle is channel one, then your aileron is channel two, elevator channel three, rudder channel four, your gear is still channel five, and your flaps are gonna go on channel six. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm checking the polarity on the pins of the receiver. So your negative is all the way to the, uh, the back side. So your black wire, is gonna to go towards the edge. Now on the receiver, if you can get right there on the label and see what it says, it's actually labeled properly. You know, so on the receiver, you can see it has throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, gear, aux one, right? We're gonna use aux one as our flaps channel, but um, you know, this is going to be the elevator. It says channel two on here, again, that is great for Futaba radios, doesn't work for Spectrum. So we are all good there. And before we plug in the, uh, the wings and do the, uh, the ailerons and the, uh, the flaps and the lights, uh, we're going to go and grab some uh, some servo extensions, and we'll be right back. I uh, went and found some uh, some servo extensions, and we're going to go ahead and get those plugged in uh, to the receiver so we can get it mounted. Uh, and the other thing I found, I found a longer uh, Y connection. So this is the Y connection that comes, that the, the lights uh, on the nose plug into, and we can plug that into the uh, into the receiver, but it's down there pretty deep. And, you know, if the servo is mounted onto the bottom and we have to plug that in every time we want to take the wings in and out, that's going to be a real pain in the butt. So I found a, a longer Y connection that we can, uh, that we can work with uh, here. And that's going to give us plenty of length to be able to, uh, to work with the extension as we mount and dismount the wings for transportation if uh, you know if you need to dismount the wings to transport it so we'll go ahead and plug this into our spare channel which on here is going to be our gear because we don't have retractable landing gear uh, so we'll go ahead and plug that in to the gear channel which is right here we will get the flaps which are right here. We'll get the flaps plugged. This is just a standard servo extension. It's already got a flap tag on it, so that's pretty convenient. Uh, we'll plug that into aux one. And remember brown towards the bottom edge there. We'll get that plugged in. All right, so we got the flaps plugged in. And the last is gonna be our aileron channel which is going to plug in right here all right so we've got everything plugged into the receiver and we're going to go ahead and grab some uh, some double-sided tape and cut off a little piece that's going to fit on the receiver 
and get that mounted into the fuselage. Now that's pretty deep inside there, so I'm just gonna kind of set it in there by the servo wires and get it settled in right there in the center. There we go, and just kind of press it in place. Just got my hand on the bottom of the fuselage to support the foam there while I press that down. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some clear tape I'm just going to tape the, uh, the antennas down on the receiver. So now we got the antennas, you know, kind of taped down where we got one going forward. Uh, let's see, like right here, we've got that one going forward and this one going to the side. So those will work great. So now that we have the receiver mounted, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the receiver bound up to the transmitter. So we're gonna go ahead and fire up the airplane. All right, and our radio, our transmitter, or sorry, our receiver down there, you'll see the little orange light is flashing. So you can go ahead and hold on to that for a second. I'm gonna hit the bind button. On the transmitter. Binding. Bind complete. DSMX 22 milliseconds. Telemetry. Okay, you can let the button go. Excellent. So we should be good to go. And I should be able to go ahead and hear my... Yep, I can hear my rudder. I can hear my elevator back there. So we are bound up and ready to go there. We're going to go back to our instructions. Uh, back where we left off and go ahead and install the wings now that we have everything else bound up. So I've gone ahead and gotten my three servo extensions. So in, in the event that I need to remove the wings for whatever reason, I've got servo extensions, I've got plenty of room to, uh, to work with those without having to pull the, the receiver out of the airplane every time I want to work with it. <laughs> All right, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just kind of set these wings kind of on the, the back on like the turtle deck area and get all these uh, Y connectors plugged in. So this is our aileron, which is going to plug in right here. And again, we want to make sure all of that stuff matches up. Next is going to be our lights, so that's going to plug in here. Oh, look at the light came on. And next, oh, lights! Ah. Ah. <laughs> and next is going to be our flaps. We'll go ahead and get those plugged in as well. All right, and now, we can take all that stuff and kind of slide it down into the cavity. Oh, this is cute. I think I like this. I think I want this to be mine. So one of the things I wanted to show you before we, before we move on is uh, just the construction of the airplane. You know, we've got these plastic inserts here, the, uh, the molded plastic inserts into the foam and inside the fuselage, uh, we're gonna, we've also got plastic inserts with brass uh, threaded inserts there. So um, you don't have to worry about stripping out uh, any just standard plastic uh, because we're threading into brass. So that's a very nice touch by Aeros RC. All right, so we're gonna use the 26 millimeter uh, screws that are provided, and that's what's going to hold the top of the wings in place. So now the wings are secure, 
and it says to hold the struts in place using these cotter pins. So I'll try that out. That seems a little hokey, but sure, we'll try it. Go ahead and flip the plane over like this. And try to insert that cotter pin right there. That seems a little weird, but you know, we're following the instructions. All right, so there's one. There we go. We've got the two pins in now for the wing struts. And let's see. What else does it have you do? All right, now it's going to have us put the antenna on. So we're going to grab our foam tack. And mm, let's see. You Gross. It's so sticky. That's what she said. <laughs> All right. We're gonna put a little foam tack down inside the cavity and just kind of around uh, where this antenna goes and that should be plenty right there and we'll put a little on the uh, we'll put a little bit of foam tack right around where this goes down into the foam That should hold it just fine. We'll go ahead and insert that into the top of the antenna. And we'll hold it in there for about 10 seconds. Then I'm gonna pull it out, stick it back in there. And what we're doing is we're just kind of getting it tacky and then let some oxygen get in there to really get it to set. All right. We'll go ahead and stick it back in there and leave it. And what's nice with the, the foam tack glue is, uh, you know, if you get any excess on the outside, you can just kind of roll it off. The next thing we're gonna do is install our uh, control rods for the elevator and the rudder. They are both the uh, the same size, so you can see the Z-bins and the end of the control rod that goes to the servo and uh, where the clevis is installed, they're both the same size. By the book, we're gonna install the clevises. Uh, we're gonna put the Z-bins into the outermost hole of the servo control horn, and we're gonna put the clevis on the outermost hole of the control surface horn. Yep, and that feels pretty good right there. So we're gonna go ahead and snap that clevis shut and slide our little rubber collar over the clevis to hold it in place. And next we're gonna move on to the elevator control rod. And that's feeling pretty good as far as being mechanically centered. We'll slide a rubber piece over that and then we'll flip the plane over and we should have a moving elevator and a moving rudder the last thing that we're going to set up in the radio is our flaps so now i've got my flaps up position i've got my takeoff flaps 
and I've got my landing flaps. So everything is good to go. We are going to install the propeller, the, uh, the propeller and the uh, propeller nut, uh, the base for the spinner and the front of the spinner. So the first part that's going to go on is the the base of the spinner. Now what you'll see is there's a little hex recess in the base of the spinner and on the prop adapter you're going to have a little hex piece there as well. So that hex piece is going to go right over that little area where it's a hex piece on the prop adapter. Next we're going to install the prop. So because this prop doesn't have any writing on it, where normally you'd see some writing like right here in this area, like some raised writing that would tell you what the size of the prop is, because that's not there, that would normally tell you which side of the prop is the front, right? So I'm going to assume by, you know, where we have these little, um, you know, the little raised areas for the injection molding process, that that's going to be the back of the propeller. So we're going to install this towards the motor. So the prop will be the next part that goes on. Uh, the next part will be the prop nut, which will screw right down onto the front. And we're going to take uh, take this guy right here and give that a little snug. There we go. And the next piece will be to install the spinner onto the front and we use one of the 10 millimeter um, screws that the kit comes with and that will screw into the front of the spinner and into the prop nut. Nice and snug. All right, so at this point, I'll go ahead and uh, get the wires kind of tucked away inside here. Put the front battery cover back in and test out the uh, test out the ESC. Uh oh, the dogs don't like that at all. All right, so the thrust is moving in the right direction. All of our lights are on, so we've got the landing light here on the left wing. Uh, we've got our left side navigation light. We've got the green right side navigation light. We've got the front landing light. Everything looks good. This thing is ready to fly. All right, guys, so there it is. The uh, complete build of the Arrows RC Bigfoot. Uh, this thing is a 1300 millimeter uh, bush plane. It runs on three cell 2200 milliamp hour batteries. Uh, we still haven't made her yet, but I'm sure she's going to fly great. Uh, this uh, has the look of like a Cessna 150 style airframe, uh, which is just a proven airframe. Uh, you know, there's, there's really not a lot bad to say about the model. There's a couple of areas which we noted in the video. Uh, where the instruction manual could have been a bit more uh, a bit more clear and you know like the little uh, the little flashing control board in the wings that thing is kind of hokey I went ahead and took that out before I ever even installed them you'll see that part in the video um, and everything else uh, went together pretty smooth um, you know we're ready to take this thing out and get it made we'll probably take it out tomorrow maybe Sunday depending on the weather and we'll get that video up too uh, if you guys like what you saw, hit the thumbs up. If you don't like it, hit the thumbs down. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. Make sure to ring that bell so you guys see more videos. We've got some more content coming in the very near future. Uh, we've got a lot of projects on the way. So make sure you keep tuned in to the RC Air Marshal. This is Dave Marshall. Thanks for watching, guys.